Good afternoon. Brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. <clears throat> this video, I'm going to be, Lord willing, seek to answer a question indirectly given on to me. Um, and that question is, are there two catching away? Um, the question I, that was asked of me was proposed as two raptures. Well, first and foremost about that, um, no, there are not two raptures spoken of within the scripture. As a matter of fact, there isn't even one rapture spoken of within the authorized version of the scriptures. There is a redemption of the purchased possession. There is the catching away. Yes, there is that. But as far as a rapture, no. There is not even one rapture mentioned within the scriptures. Okay? But there is a catching away. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, brethren. Um, I'm not letting that one lie. Yeah. We need to remove the term rapture from our vocabulary when addressing the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We need to get that out of the equation. Alright? Using the word rapture in place of the redemption of the purchased possession, that's error. Okay? So... Anyway, enough of that. Are there two catching ways found within the scriptures? We're going to, Lord willing, address that today. And as you saw, I'm going to be using two sets of scriptures for this video. But first, let's, let's uh, get uh, somewhat of an understanding of the catching away. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? course you are expected to follow me along in the scriptures and I will speak to you as though you are okay first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 on to the close of the chapter behold I shew you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye in a moment very quick okay for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, the body, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the, the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Look at verse 52. In a moment 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed trump sound hearing okay faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God okay now of course first Thessalonians first Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 13 on to the close of the chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 on to the close of the chapter. But I would ha not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, are asleep, dead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. We, not every eye is going to see when the Lord calls up, redeems his purchased possession. Okay, there's evidence given when the, when the Lord spake um, and it sounded like it thundered, others heard a voice, okay? Yes, our Lord is able to do stuff like that, okay? The lost are not going to hear or see when the Lord's like, come up hither, okay? Not all eyes are going to see him when he redeems his purchased possession, okay? They, the lost will probably hear something like a thunder, Okay, but we are going to hear, come up hither. Okay? For the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with a shout, come up hither. Okay, so what do we see as far as the redemption of the purchased possession? It is the Lord in a moment in the twinkling of, the, of an eye, at the sound of the trump, okay, sound. Okay? Verse 16 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Lord himself will see him. He'll, he'll it's, come up hither. Whoa! Just like that. That quick. Okay? We're going to hear, come up hither, and we're going to see him. Okay? It's all the Lord. Him calling out redeeming his purchased possession the Lord himself doing thus that's very important to remember okay it's the Lord himself for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first okay then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord meet the Lord in the air okay right there it tells you that not the whole not every eye is going to see him as when he comes back at his second coming okay those of the church of the living God his body those who are saved born again converted we who are going to hear come up hither we're going to see him and be, and what does that say? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That quick. To meet the Lord in the air. The Lord is still in the air. Not coming down at his second coming when every eye is going to see him. Okay? To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay? 
Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So when it comes to the redemption of the purchased possession, okay, we're going to hear, come up hither. We're going to see him and be with the Lord in the air. The Lord is not coming down like he will at his second coming, where every eye is going to see him. Not every eye is going to see him at all. When he calls up, catches up, redeems his body, the church of the living God. Okay? Are you, you with me so far? Okay? But now let's read um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, as they are saying today, and which they will also echo during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Okay? You're going to see a very similar comparison to this, um, about how we today are children of light, and those who are of the devil are the children of darkness. Okay? You're going to see a, a remember this, uh, as we continue forward. Okay? Remember that. Hinge this. Okay. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Sleep there is referring to as this type of sleep. How do you know? Defined by the context. Sleep as when he referred to it in uh, chapter 4, as those who are dead, um, is defined by the context in which it appears. Just so you know, okay? Let's continue. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Right here. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. The time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath being poured on the earth for seven years. Okay? That time period is for the Jew. The church of the living God, okay, the body of Christ, those who are saved, born again, and converted, are not on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. We, the church of the living God, are redeemed. We are the purchased possession that he purchased with his blood. Okay? We get caught up. We get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession ends this dispensation. Okay? Because, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves and edify one another, even as also ye do. Okay? And also, too, you can read the entire chapter of Ephesians chapter 1. You can do that on your own time, because we got some deep things we're going to be looking into today. Okay? But Ephesians chapter 1 is the clearest evidence that, yes, there is a redemption of the purchased possession. That happens before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But also now, let's go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 10 in John chapter 10. Okay? John chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 10. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that, entereth, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. 
But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Why is that? Because our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was giving them the first mention of the catching away. Okay? Yes, the catching away is alluded to in type throughout the Old Testament. Okay? The ark. Okay? Noah and the ark. Okay? Lot being taken out. Okay? Before the destruction of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, which we're going to be looking at in Matthew chapter 24. We are headed there again today just so you know okay also in Isaiah chapter 57 verses 1 and 2 okay in type in type the catching away is referenced within the Old Testament right here he is putting it straightforward for them this parable spake Jesus unto them but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them they didn't get it okay He's making reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Okay? The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly abundantly okay so right here and we could continue on but we got other stuff we're going to get to but our Lord Jesus Christ is giving the first reference here unto the disciples of the redemption of the purchased possession okay yes it is reference to in type in the Old Testament yes it is right here he's giving them the very first morsels of it okay and also to go to Revelation chapter 4, just one verse, one verse. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door. Who is the door? Our Lord Jesus Christ. A door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, okay, was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. So, the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away, consists of, Come up hither! Psh, up we go! In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, like that, both the dead and us, Psh, that quick, okay? To meet the Lord in the air. It is not his second coming. Because we are going up to meet him in the air. What happens? We hear something. Sound. Okay? A voice. He calleth them by name. Come up hither. Now how he's going to say every single one of our names at the same time? Guess what? He's God. He can do it. He can do that. We, okay? Okay? But the point is, the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away, 
involves him, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, saying, come up hither. Okay? Come on up. We're done. Let's go. Come on. Okay? The voice call the, the voice of the Lord. He calls us up. Okay? He does that. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, time time's up. Come on. Okay? That is the cat that is the principle of the catching away. The Lord redeems his purchased possession. Come up hither, okay? We, we've had, we have established that, right? Right? Yes? Okay? So, that is the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Once that happens, okay? Once the church of the living God gets taken out, okay? By hearing, okay? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, we, we have to establish this, brethren. Okay, so bear with me. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance into you that it was not in vain. Oops. Second Thessalonians. <laughs> Take it apart. <laughs> okay. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And I have, I, uh, have a video on this and I corrected that. Uh, the day of Christ is talking about his second coming. Okay? Right in this chapter. It's talking about this context, second coming, okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. The abomination that maketh desolate, okay, that man of sin, the son of perdition, standing in the holy place, we're going to look at that, okay, the third rebuilt temple, okay, saying what? Showing himself that he is God, he is going to look like the Catholic depictions of Jesus Christ. That is what I believe, okay? That's what I believe he's going to look like. Midway, whatever, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it doesn't mean that the first three years are peaceful, okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be let loose, and he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Y'all think that's going to be a peaceful time? Crazy. No. But, midway, that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the temple. I am God. Okay? That's what he's going to do. Okay? Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity, of iniquity doth already work. Okay, there are many antichrists right now, okay? Okay? But the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, has not been revealed yet. It's not here yet, okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, church of the living God, be taken out of out of the way. Okay? Now look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Many of those who said they were of us, but they were not all of us, or else they would have continued uh, with us. Okay? Falling away. 
I believe wholeheartedly the falling away is those who have been playing Christian for so long during these last days are going to be revealed as the phony and fakes that they are. Okay? Yes, saved people can fall away too. But I believe in context, this is more talking about many of those who say that they were, but actually ain't. That's what I believe. Okay? That's what I believe that falling away is talking about. Right there in context. Okay? And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? So, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Okay? People are falling away pretty crazy right now. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That man of sin, the son of perdition, cannot be revealed until we, the church of the living God, are redeemed. So where it says here, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, that can only happen when what? We, the church of the living God, are taken out of the way. Okay? You get it? Alright? So no contradiction there. And then, verse 8, shall that wicked be revealed. That man of sin, the son of perdition, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, his second coming. Okay? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Very evident and true about today. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Bro, look what's going on right now today. Okay? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay? So, catching away happens sometime, okay? It's going to happen sometime, but we are going to hear, come up hither. We are going to be taken out of the way, okay? The redemption of the purchased possession. Come up hither. Psst, we go up. And then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? He is Antichrist. Again, brethren, show me the Antichrist in the Scriptures. Okay? So, it involves hearing. We're going to hear. Okay? We're going to be up there with the Lord. We're going to see Him. Okay? We are going to be caught up to him in the air. He is not coming down to us. Okay, that's the second coming. There's only one catching away. There's only one redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? There's only one of those. It's not two. It's not three. Whatever. No, there's only one. Okay? Now, within the scriptures, you have Elijah who was taken up in a whirlwind. Yes. Yes. You also have Enoch, who walked with God and then he was not because the Lord took him. Okay? The Lord took him. And notice about Elijah and Enoch taken up with a whirlwind. Elijah and uh, Enoch walked with God and then, God, then he was not for God took him. Okay? In type, yes, but the taken, whereas the redemption of the purchased possession is a come up hither. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay? But now, let's get to the matter of at hand. I have to go through that. Okay? Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. All right. 
Matthew chapter 24. Now, we are going to primarily start reading uh, from verse 21, and we're going to do this in pieces. We're going to read verses 21 on to verse 28 to start. But very firstly, Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the conditions before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Uh, very clear to see. You can read that on your own time. But as, as we had mentioned about the abomination that maketh desolate, verse 15 in Matthew chapter 24. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that man of sin, the son of perdition, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, this is the son of perdition standing within the third rebuilt temple showing himself that he is God. Let's look at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 verse 14. Okay. Mark chapter 13 verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not the abomination of desolation, that man of sin, the son of perdition, standing where it ought not, within the third rebuilt temple. Let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay? So, what's going to happen? Okay? In Matthew chapter 24, you have all this stuff that happens up to verse 15. Okay? He's going forth, remember, to conquer, conquering and to conquer. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24 is speaking on to who? Jews. Okay? This has nothing to do with the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Okay? This has nothing to do with the church of the living God. Verse uh, 1 in chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. Let's skip down to verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him pri privately, saying, Tell us, tell us, Jews, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? and the end of the world. Okay? Pertaining on to the Jews. It has nothing to do with the church of the living God. See, that's what Catholicism tells you. And remember, Catholics are Christians. Remember that. Remember that. We need, to, we need a little bit more distinction there, brethren. But now, midway through, somewhere in there, okay, that man of sin, the son of perdition, going to go into the temple. I'm God, okay? At that time, there are going to be those Jews who are going to get it, okay? Do you understand that? Yes, okay? During that time, somewhere around that time, it's not going to be right away, the mark of the beast is going to be implemented. And if anyone take the mark of the beast, you go straight to hell. And that's what all these easy believism heretics and all these coadjutors are preparing you people for. Those of you who are not saved. Okay? That's what these devils are preparing you for. Okay? But now let's pick up at verse 21 and we are going to read on to verse 28 in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? For then shall be great tribulation. I do not see the word thee in front of that. Do you? No. For then shall be great tribulation, 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect, elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Elect. Context. The Jew. The elect. Okay? Now also keep in mind that somewhere in there between the revealing of him in the temple saying, hey, I'm God, okay? Of the, that man of sin, the son of perdition, doing that, somewhere in there, the mark of the beast is going to take place. That is what I believe. Okay? And once you take that, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. You can't take it off or cut your hand off. You can't gouge it out of your forehead. Once you take the mark of the beast, you're done. Okay? Because during the dispensation, at the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Okay? You have to understand that. Okay? You have to understand that. You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. So, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect sakes, those days shall be sh uh, shortened. Number one, talking about the Jews. But someone who takes the mark of the beast, they belong to Satan. They're going to hell. They can't be God's elect, can they? if they're damned to go to hell since they take the mark of the beast. They can't be the elect, can they? Oh, sure. I'm sure there are going to be Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble that will take the mark of the beast. Absolutely. Of course. But they ain't his elect once they take that mark of the beast. Because God says once you take that, you're going to hell. Okay? Let's continue. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The very elect. Number one, it's talking about Jews where it says, uh, For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Those who get it, and right there, again, that very elect, the remnant. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The second coming. For wheresoever the carcass is, carcass, there will the eagles be gathered together. Carcass and the eagles gathered together. Go now to, uh, where are we? Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Okay? Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical kingdom of located in Jerusalem. That thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven, okay? That's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is Jerusalem, where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to rule and reign from for a thousand years, okay? The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while he slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat 
and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the terrace also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath, the, hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye fir together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, continuing the train of thought, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now some will say, Gather together first, gather ye together first the tares. Some will say that it's like, Okay, there's going to be a rapture of the evil pea, of the tares first. We're going to keep reading this. Okay? We're going to keep reading. Verse 31. Oh, well, let's reread -re verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in that, in the time of the harvest, I will say unto the reapers, Gather ye together the first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Matthew chapter 24, verses 23, on to verse 26. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were, ver it were possible, they, should deceive, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So the wheat and the tares. Okay? Let's continue. Another in uh, Matthew chapter 13. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now hold up. That man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, during the time of Jacob's trouble, after we get caught up, okay, Lord, the Lamb, the Lord's going to open one of the seals, and out goes that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer, okay? It's going to be devastation. It's going to be war. It's not going to be peaceful. The wall is going to be built in troublous times, okay? Okay, you get that? But once that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the rebuilt temple, okay, and there are going to be those who have taken his mark in their hand, in their right hand, or in their forehead, okay, they're going to be saying, I don't know, that, well, they're going to believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So these guys who have the mark, you get it? You get it? The counterfeit? And the mustard seed. The Jews who are going to realize oh, all those that we made fun of, who we didn't listen to, all those authorized version of the scripture believers who warned us about this, they were, they were actually right telling us the truth. See, they're going to have a grain of a mustard seed. They're going to get it. It's like, oh wow. See? Let's continue. Another parable, let's reread this. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree. So that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman, Israel, 
took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Okay? The wheat and the tares. The imitation kingdom established by that man of sin, the son of perdition. Jews are going to get it. They're going to have a mustard seed to begin with. But then that's going to grow. It's going to be likened unto leaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is coming. The king is coming. See? Oh, really? Yeah, let's continue. Okay? All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Thank you, pardon. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went, and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Ready for this? He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Okay? This is not during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand years. Why is that? Because Satan is bound for a thousand years. Okay? Yet there's still going to be evil people. Yes. But, but, the children of the kingdom, the coming kingdom. Okay? This is not, this is not talking about during the kingdom of heaven. This is all talking about leading up to the kingdom of heaven, the second coming, when our Lord establishes the kingdom of heaven. See? Okay, you get it? Let's continue. Okay? The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Okay? Now also to remember, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. It's omnipresent. His body, the church, us, hello, we get caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But God is omnipresent. He ain't going anywhere. He's going to be there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? But you got to remember, eternal security, unless you're one of the 144,000 Jews, okay, um, eternal security is not there in the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't forget that. No matter what these devil coadjutors want to tell you with their satanic evil, uh, evil easy believism, okay? Eternal security is not during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Let's continue. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that one here a little later. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll get to that. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be, be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let them let him hear. It's going to be a separation. Okay? The sep um, you take the mark of the beast, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to hell. You're separated regardless. You're separated onto that damnation. Okay? Okay? It's talking about a separating. Separating the sheep from the goats. Okay? The sheep, goats, sheep, goats. Okay? Let's continue. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field. That which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Okay, once they realize, whoa, our king is coming. Alright, there's going to be a separation between the goats, uh, the sheep and the goats. 
But during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's like, and the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. Hideth. Okay? Book of Hebrews. Forsake not your the gathering uh, together of yourselves. Okay? For during the time of Jacob's trouble, those who keep the command, who have the faith of Jesus Christ and keep the commandments, okay? Okay? Going to be hiding themselves from that man of sin, the son of perdition, and his people who have taken the mark of the beast, okay? Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he hath found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it forsake everything in order to stay true unto the coming of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for you Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble once you figure it out that uh, we who believe the authorized version of the scriptures okay of the church of the living God we've been warning you of this for centuries okay Okay? Don't take that mark. You're going to have to be running uh, maybe like uh, Isaiah, bare naked in the wilderness, away from that man of sin, the son of perdition. But your reward is what? Who when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea. Now, pay attention. And gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Okay? So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth Jesus saith unto them have you understood all these things they say unto him yea Lord then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Okay? Alright? So now go back to Matthew chapter 24. Now let's pick up in verse 29 and read on to verse 35 in Matthew chapter 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her life, her light, excuse me, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, all the tribes of the earth mourn. Jews, okay? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Send his angels. Now notice what we've been looking about, uh, about the reapers, sending of angels. Okay? The sending of angels. We saw that here in Matthew chapter 13. We're seeing this here in Matthew chapter 24. He sends out his angels. He himself is not calling them up, is he? No. No. See, that's the danger of the true rapture thing. Number one, there isn't a rapture in the scriptures to begin with. You see what happens when you use that false term? But see, those who wish to deceive, 
will come in with the, well, there, there are two raptures. There's the one for the body of Christ, and then there's one for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's 11 brought in by someone else who isn't of the church of the living God. You mark my words. You mark my words. If they're ignorant and they're saying something like that, they get corrected, praise the Lord, you adhere, adhere yourself onto that correct correction through the scripture. What do you do with it? But if you don't and continue on, you got yourself an infiltrator, my friend. Okay? What do you do with the correction that you receive? Do you adhere to it? Or continue on? Ah. Let's continue this. Come on. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. The angels go out, just like the reapers. Okay? He's not calling them up during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? It's not being called up. He's sending people out to get them. Ooh, let's continue, okay? Verse 31. Sorry about that. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Fig tree, synonymous with Israel. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Isn't harvest done in the summertime? Or something like that? But, regardless, that might be wrong, but regardless, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Matthew chapter 13 Verses 31 and 32. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Talking about a mustard seed, a small mustard seed of faith that the Jews are going to have once they figure out. It's like, oh, that's the guy that all those uh, authorized versions of the scripture believers were telling us about. Whoa! Whoa, okay. We got to get this authorized version of the scriptures and check this out. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. I know, mustard seed, fig tree. I get it. I get that. Okay, I get that. But, verse 32, now, can, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words, the authorized version of the scriptures, but my words shall not pass away. That includes during the time of Jacob's trouble. The authorized version of the scriptures are going to be available. But see, the church of the living God is not on the earth. God is. But his body has been taken up. See, the famine in the land thing. Okay, remember that? Okay. I forget what video it was where I talked about that in. Um, and I'll try to remember it after this, Lord willing. Okay? But, okay, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay? Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, 
He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Okay? Sowing the seeds, the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. His words are not going to pass away. Okay? They, during the time of Jacob's trouble, are going to have the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay? Absolutely. They're going to be going to the authorized version of the Scriptures once they figure it out. Once they see that abomination of desolation spoken up by Daniel the prophet. Okay? Heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will not pass away. You see? Okay? Now, what about this angels thing? Okay? We see the reapers, okay? <clears throat> where, where does he say that? Okay? Uh, verse 41 in Matthew chapter 13. Back to part of this. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. Okay? And they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and that which do iniquity. Okay? And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let them let him hear. When the Lord Jesus Christ come back, okay, he's coming back with who? His angels. Who are those? And he's going to establish his kingdom. And he's going to, once he comes and establishes it, the separation see. Okay? But who are these angels? Go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 under verse 33. We're going to look at variations of this also elsewhere in the scriptures. But he sends his angels out. The reapers, he sends his angels out. So see, it's not a catching away. Okay? And we're going to get to the ones that are taken. But there again, it's taken after he sends out his angels. Okay? Who are they? Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 and verse 33. Right? Right. Take your part, brother. My nose is it. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren. The first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And there you go. There, <laughs> there's a very um, true statement of all these lost devil coadjutors who say that they are Christians, but they ain't of the church of the living God. Okay? They don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Keep that in mind. For in the resurrection, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. In heaven. Resurrection. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? 
God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Go to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verses 24 and verse 27 now. Okay? Same discourse, but check this out. And Jesus answering said unto them, the same thing about the Sadducees, which we just looked at. And Jesus answering said unto them, Ye do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the Scriptures, neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead, that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. Oh, 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 and check this one out. Check this one out, okay? Luke 20. Luke 20. Luke 20, verses 34 and verse 38. Now check this out. Again, okay, the Sadducees about the thing about the resurrection. Check this out. Verses 34 and verse 38. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world, this is going to play, uh, playing a part here coming up too as we continue in Matthew chapter 24. Remember this. The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world. What world is that? What world is that? Uh, the world of the time of Jacob's trouble? No. That world. The kingdom of heaven. Oh, let's keep reading. And the resurrection from the dead. Caught up. Okay. Neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. Being the children of of the resurrection and Jesus Christ said I am the resurrection being children of the resurrection meaning that the Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father Jesus Christ is the resurrection he said that unto Mary about the Lazarus I believe it was I am the resurrection being children of the resurrection the redemption of the you, you get it you get it isn't this beautiful? <laughs> okay. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses shewed at the bush when he called the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, where he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. Revelation chapter 22. You knew I was coming here, didn't you? Of course you did. If you're at the church of the living God, of course you did. Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 unto verse 11. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. To worship the angel. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that. For I am thy fellow servant. He's an angel, but John wasn't an angel. What's going on here? You're getting it, ain't you? Praise the Lord. 
and of thy brethren the prophets. And of them which keep the sayings of this book, book, worship God. What does he say there? I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets. Fellow servant. A redeemed saint? One of us? Caught up? His angels? He sends us out? And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Take your pardon, brethren. So, who is this angel? Who are these angels that our Lord talks about sending forth his angels? Check this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 4. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Are you looking at verse 2? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, those who are redeemed. Really? Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Now get a lot of that one, brother. How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge. Judge. Won't get on that one. But set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. So we are going to judge angels. And at his second coming... He sends forth his angels to do separating. Who are these angels? Those of us who were caught up with him. It's us. I beg your pardon, brethren, me <laughs> with this. They mustn't touch you thing. But uh, yes, these angels, I believe wholeheartedly proven proving through scripture I believe that those are us these angels that he sends out he doesn't call these people up he sends his angels out it's not another catching away there's only one of them where he's like come up hither okay Enoch was taken Elijah was caught up in a whirlwind very similar, but not, hey, come up hither. Okay? There's only one catching away. There isn't a second one during the time of Jacob's trouble. And there definitely ain't two raptures, let alone one. Beg your pardon, brother. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. The, my nose was just itching like crazy. There aren't two raptures. There isn't one rapture. There's only one catching away. He sends his angels out to claim these people. Okay? But now let's continue in Matthew chapter 24 verses 36 on to verse 51. Oh, what, did I, what did I write there? Yes. But of that day and hour knoweth no man no. Not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
the days of Noah, where they were marrying and uh, given in the marriage. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Taken, not caught up, taken by who? Hmm? Let's go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Verses 22 on to the close of the chapter. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say, say to you, See here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now hold up here, okay? Now hold up. He makes reference twice here of Noe, but only here in Luke he makes reference to Lot, okay? I believe him making a reference to Noe, Noah, excuse me, Noe is how it's pronounced here, um, you know, you're going from Hebrew to Greek here in the English here, and it's pronounced Noah. Never mind, okay? But Noah, okay? Noah. We get caught up, all right? That begins, thus begins the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? They're going to be eating and drinking at first, even during troublous times, okay? We get caught up, okay? Look at that. Go back to Matthew chapter 24. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noe were, so also shall so also the coming of the Son of Man. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and and giving in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay? At very first when the son of perdition goes forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? He's going to be going, I believe, after the Muslims. Okay? That's going to be a time of war and devastation and destruction. Yes. The walls are going to be built in troublous times. Okay? The redemption of the purchase possession has already happened. Okay? But there are going to be some semblances of normality, so forth. But then here in Luke chapter 17, he goes and talks about Lot. Okay? Likewise also, verse 28 in Luke chapter 17. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. 
after that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the rebuilt temple, I am God, all this stuff is going to happen, I believe it's going to be more so likened onto the days of Lot. Okay? This the ever after that happens. That's what I personally believe. Um, I'll talk to any of you brothers and sisters about that. Go ahead. But that is what I believe. Let's continue. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The Son of Man be revealed. So I believe. Like I said, the, before the son of perdition goes into that third temple, rebuilt temple, it's like, I am God, and the mark of the beast be established. He's going forth, conquering and to conquer. It's going to be troublous times. It's not going to be a time of peace. It's going to be war. But they're going to be marrying, 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 excuse me, and giving in marriage, just like in the days of Noah. Okay? But then he comes. It's like, here I am. Then the Jews are going to wake up. It's like, oh boy. Did not the angels go to Sodom to see if there were any righteous there? And they took, the angels took a lot by the hand. You get it? The angels that went to Sodom grabbed Lot. It's like, let's go. Also grabbed his wife and his daughters. But he grabbed them. The angels came and took them out. It wasn't the Lord saying, come up hither. You get it? Let's continue. In that day, verse 31 in Luke chapter 17. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Now, in context, here comes the Son of Man. Here comes our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Okay, and verse 30, even thus it shall be, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay, at his second coming. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. It's not a catching away. It's what? The angels. Okay? Separating. Separating. Okay? It's talking about separation. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, again, you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. Okay? You've already separated yourself under that damnation. Okay? But there's going to be a separating. Okay? And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Okay? Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Picking up at verse 42. Watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant when his Lord, whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. 
But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and to drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and in, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go now to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. More about on the separation thing. You know about the one taken and the other left? Check this out. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 on to the close of the chapter. When the Son of Man shall come, Matthew 25, verses 31 on to verse 46. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his and all the holy angel and all the holy angels with him. That's us. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Right there, verse 32. God wants things separate, people! See, that man of sin, the son of perdition, <coughs> Roman Catholicism, Satan's church and his army, the Jesuits, want to bring everybody together. Blend, mix everybody together. Ecumenicalism. Okay? Bring everybody together. Bring them all together. Genesis 11. Again, when everybody gets together, they build themselves towers reaching onto heaven okay to make a name for themselves okay God wants things separate people please understand that and please accede onto it okay God God wants that over there that over there 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 he wants separation Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, they want to bring everybody together. God is a God of distinction, separation. Look at that verse. Okay? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Oh, kind of like the tares and the wheat? Separating them? Let them grow up together during the time of Jacob's trouble. But when he come back and establish his kingdom, separate them? Do you see? Do you see? I hope you do. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? Yeah, let's continue. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Remember what we read in uh, in uh, John chapter ten, okay? And remember about how we looked about the children of light and the children of darkness, which is pertinent for this dispensation. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, sheep and goats. <laughs> let's continue. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These are all works that are being described here, by the way. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. That's, uh, this gives uh, credence on to James about pure religion and undefiled is to visit widows and the fatherless, 
that kind of thing, okay? Because the book of James is a time of Jacob's trouble epistle, dear people. As is the book of Hebrews, okay? Let's continue. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? That's all works to me, sounds like, doesn't it? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. That separation. Sheep, goats, tares, wheat. Okay? One taking the other left. Okay? Again, there's only one redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? One catching away. During the time of Jacob's trouble, our Lord sends out his angels, which are we, that go up with him. Okay? He sends us. He comes down with 10,000 of his, or 10,000 of his saints. Church of the living God. Okay? We come with him. He sends us out. <coughs> That's why the guy who John was talking to is like, hey, whoa! <laughs> Don't worship me! Okay? Then shall he say, verse 40, uh, 41 in Matthew chapter 25, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell, the lake of fire, is prepared for the devil and his angels. You as man ought not to be going there. Why are you? For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, not soul annihilationism, like uh, Bullinger teaches. No. Everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. James. Go to the book of James. Go to the book of James. Okay. Book of James. Okay. Book of James chapter 1. Okay. Book of... Uh, Book of James, chapter 1, okay? Looking here in Matthew, chapter 25, where the Lord says, verse 35 and 36, For when for I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came on to me. James, chapter 1, Verses 22 on to verse 27. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, 
and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is in vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Unspotted from the world. Okay? To be other than, separate. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, very important that they be not spotted by the world. Okay? But also... Verse 41, okay, on to verse 43. Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. James chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 6 go to now ye rich men weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you your riches are corrupted and your garments are mothy your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Gold and silver isn't going to mean anything during the time of Jacob's trouble, by the way. Okay? And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers whom have reaped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just. And, doth, and he doth not resist you. I think that's a very interesting parallel about those during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? During that time. Alright? Those who are going to be damned to hell and those who are going to go into uh, everlasting, um, into the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me. I thought that was a very interesting thing there to bring up to your attention. But anyway. Anyway, brethren. Hopefully, now, that's, that's going to be it for this video. Um, there are not two catching aways that happen within Scripture. Okay? There's only one. Okay? Enoch walked with God and then he was not. Because the Lord took him. Okay? The Lord took him. Elijah he went up into heaven by a whirlwind. Okay? The redemption of the purchased possession, the church of the living God, which you and I are if you are saved, born again, and converted. We get out of here when we hear, come up hither. Okay? The Lord calls us. We go up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye to be with the Lord in the air. He does not come down. We go up to him. He calls us up. Okay? We are caught up. During the time of Jacob's trouble, at his second coming, he sends his angels, his ten thousands of his saints, those of us, the church of the living God that went up with him, when he comes, uh, comes back, he sends us out. He does not call them up. He sends us out to take back and to divide. <coughs> so, there are not two catching aways. There is not a catching away during the time of Jacob's trouble. And there is hardly, hardly a rapture at all in Scripture, let alone two. Okay? So, uh, hopefully, 
hopefully this uh, will help some of you who have uh, thought on this or had questions about this. Hopefully this little morsel will lead you to guide or guide you to you know to study deeper on your own time. Okay. Hopefully that will do this. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. But that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you. You know who you are. On to you who uh, indirectly but directly kind of asked me to do something on this. Thank you. And also to uh, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God, thank you for your prayers, especially for that of my wife, your sister. Lord is answering your prayers for my wife, your sister. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. But um, that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, we, we got quite a bit of stuff going on in the background here. Um, we got the uh, things going on with my wife and her, her feet, like I mentioned. Also, we are in prayer and making phone calls and looking up stuff about perhaps moving. We need to give an answer to these people here whether we are going to renew our contract or whatever, or whether we are going to move, we need to let them know before the 1st of July. So um, please keep us in your prayers for that. Because um, he really has yet to give a clear answer on that one yet. So, But anyway, thank you, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Uh, hopefully this... Um, Hopefully this answers a few questions. Um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you, every single one of you, for your prayers and for all that you have done. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay?